Alright, so if you're trying to get yourself some fallen guillotines, then obviously you need to uh, go and see our site. You need to pick up the quests. I think the one for the fallen guillotine is called Spin to Win. Um, and basically you have to get a whole lot of kills um, with any type of sword. And then you'll get that quest done. Then you can come over here and you can attune the fallen guillotine. As you can see here, it says deactivate because I already have it activated. Um, and then you go talk to Shax as he's going to give you the curated falling guillotine, which is just a, it does have the shiny ornament, but it's not, you know, a typical shiny weapon. It's just a static roll that everybody can get uh, from Shax. Um, but what that does is it, um, it allows you to keep the weapon attuned and that's going to increase your drop rate for falling guillotine specifically inside of Onslaught and therefore is going to increase your uh, drop rate for shiny versions which is going to give you double perks so for example while I was doing the spin to win quest I ended up just randomly getting a uh, a shiny succession with uh, four perks um, and that's not something that I ever would have got trying to do the spin to win quest uh, in like a Shiro Chi checkpoint or any checkpoint really uh, because um, you could just you can just do the R site quests inside of Onslaught and get a whole list of items um, that you will never get anywhere else. Um, so, for example, you can progress all of your um, all of your bounties that you might have, um, whether it's from Shacks or from R site. I don't have one from our site up right now, uh, but all these bounties give you uh, Shaq's reputation, which obviously is going to progress you down that sh um, down Shaq's um, vendor track over here, right? So you can fight, you can max out your rep, you and mean? you can get the super black alpha key. Um, also, as you build up your rep, you get engrams, so I can just use these engrams to get more brave weapons. Um, I also get all those trophies from the seasonal track. Just playing Onslaught, you get, um, you get, uh, you get trophies, like, every 10 waves, um, and you get seasonal engrams from the helm. So, if, like, if you have the artifacts, uh, selected, uh, at the four different vendors in the helm, then you can get up to like seven, eight seasonal engrams after every 10 waves that you can go and use to spend on high stat armor or seasonal weapons that you don't yet have. Um, or you can just dismantle all, all that stuff to get enhancement cores, right? Also, every 10 waves with the double chests, you get enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant alloys, maybe ascendant shards, I'm not too sure. Um, like I said, you get the trophies that you can come over here to get more brave weapons. You can unlock all your armor sets with the trophies. Um, and then all the meanwhile, playing Onslaught, you're probably having fun because it's a great activity and much less boring than going to just farm kills at Shiro Chi for nothing other than the kills. Uh, you can get the kills inside of Onslaught. You can test your build. You can have fun with your build. Um, you're getting those brave weapons. You're getting those the chance at getting your shinies. Uh, you can be, you could potentially get your Reborn Brave Emblem if you don't have that yet when you get the 50 wave uh, Legend completion. And obviously you're working towards that Super Black Shader as well, right? So that would be the way that I recommend farming it. And also, by the way, uh, let's see if I can find it here. I have three left to do for Recluse, Hung Jury, and Succession. Uh, if you do these inside of Onslaught, you get more progression, right? So, I mean, it's you just get miles more for your money, for your time, um, doing doing these quests inside of Onslaught. And it's, I would say it's much less, uh, or it's much less tedious, it's much more enjoyable, it's a good activity. So anyways, that's enough about my um, recommendation on how to get the R-Site quest done what's the build that i'm using here to specifically complete spin to win um i figured i'd you test out a strongholds build with throne cleaver um actually ironically root of nightmares is the featured raid this week and the last time i did a strongholds video was inside root of nightmares farming the master cataclysm encounter and i basically showcased this build there so you can go back to the channel uh go back about five six weeks and you'll find the build there 
Um, but just to go over it real quick, uh, Strongholds gives you infinite guard stats to your swords, uh, which is already incredible for survivability because you're basically invincible. It's like 97 or 98 percent damage resistance while you've got your guard up um, also while you have your guard up you build up perfect guard stacks which you'll see on the left side of your screen so as you take damage you build up more stacks and then uh, once you get those stacks then you swipe in an enemy and with your sword and it gives you restoration times two for a number of seconds that is dependent on the number of perfect guard stacks that you have but that doesn't matter because all we need is a couple seconds of restoration times two with very minimal perfect guard stacks because we're playing on the solar subclass with ember of empyrean and ember of solace so it means that we can just constantly extend the timer of restoration times two and refresh it uh, and up to one, at one point I saw I had 22 seconds of restoration times two, right? And all you have to do to keep that going is just keep killing stuff, right? So you could basically have restoration times two all the time while you're in battle with strongholds. Um, and with Throne Cleaver being a solar sword with an enhanced incandescent, uh, it just spreads so much scorch, uh, sets off ignitions left and right, um, especially with Ember of Char and Ember of Ashes for those additional scorch stacks to get up to the ignitions faster, and then those ignitions spread scorch. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Roaring Flames, Soul Invictus for survivability and ability regen. Right, you get that sunspot, you get the Soul Invictus buff, you get more, um, you get more melee and grenade energy from Soul Invictus. Um, it also is a source of backup restoration if you don't have your restoration times two from Strongholds. And Roaring Flames just to uh, get more damage on my abilities, because why not? Um, I'm not using Throwing Hammer here because you don't want to be running around throwing your hammer. You want to be, you want to have your sword out, right? And you want to be guarding and doing damage and getting that uh getting your buffs refreshed right i'm also getting radiant from the seasonal artifact so if you're wondering why i don't have ember of torches on here uh or need a throwing hammer to constantly refresh radiant because it's radiant is free with the seasonal artifact with flint striker so i may as well take advantage of it while it's there just get rapid solar weapon kills and boom you got radiant then you can just use your sword on a barrier champion no problem it's anti-barrier um yeah so very good for that um and what else what else what else burning maul because uh i do switch to pyro gales when we get to the boss uh, right because i don't really want to go out and sword the boss and I, there's no point in sorting the boss i'm using the sword so i can get lots of kills and uh survive survive the waves right the boss is actually kind of the easy part in legend onslaught it's the waves that are the hard part and if you're doing the spin to win quest then you need to be slain out with a sword not so focused on single target damage uh, but it does do that very well uh, also, but this is, you know, the way I have this Throne Cleaver built is for ad clear specifically. Uh, tireless Blade just to give you more ammo on every other kill. Don't even need like boss spec or anything just because this thing hits so hard. You're basically, you know, single swiping red bars and even orange bars at times. Um, so yeah, it's very good. Stat distribution here. 100 resilience, uh, 70 recovery, 70 discipline, but I do have font of focus on and font of restoration. So as long as I have armor charge, which is all the time because I'm constantly making orbs at my feet with my sword, uh, then I have triple 100s because that gives me an extra 30 recovery, 30 discipline. That means I get to spam my thermite grenades more often. Thermite grenades are a great uh, damage grenade to use on Titan, especially with strongholds. Uh, you know, you can connect yourself a path between you and the enemies with the thermite grenade they charge you they're you know they're walking through a line of fire to get to you they're getting scorched they're igniting uh it's very good and then hammer strike because i want to uh get into situations quickly and then pull out my sword uh get out of situations quickly it allows me to do that and also hammer strike is very good it's kind of like consecration which is part of the problem that i have with consecration uh is that you could just use hammer strike to get an ignition right you just hammer strike a red bar ad even if the ad is like near a yellow bar or an orange bar it's going to set off an ignition scorch everything um it's it's very good right it's just not as spammable as throwing a hammer and it's i guess not as big of a boom as as consecration but yeah that's pretty much it for the build so enjoy the gameplay and i will see you in the next one
On to the next fight. Thank you.